You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the guns, the drugs, the my generation will take the fall. The saints will come to me. Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to May 3rd, 99. Tonight we've got Raw coming from San Diego, California, while Nitro takes place in Flair Country, Charlotte, North Carolina. The Nature Boy phones Charles Robinson at the very beginning of Nitro to announce that he's on his way to the Charlotte Coliseum. He's also bringing along Asia, who Rick refers to as Double D. He's got a bus full of mentally unstable patients also coming to the show. And while we don't get a look at his face, it appears that Scott Hall's driving this bus to Charlotte. Are we in for more absolute nonsense this week on WCW Nitro? Yes, yes we are. But first, let's take a look at our number one. The first 15 minutes of Nitro features recaps from last week, Ricky Rackman interviewing fans in the audience and interviewing NASCAR driver Jerry Naidoo, and we also see Gorgeous George getting trained for her upcoming match at Slamboree. The Armstrong brothers came out for a match against Kidman and Rey Mysterio. Scott said he and his brother are going to prove their world champion material even though this is a non-title match, and the Armstrongs proceeded to get beaten in the Nitro opening match rather decisively. Benoit and Malenko definitely gave the Armstrongs a bit more time to shine but Mysterio and Kidman had no time for such pleasantries. The horsemen ran down after the match to attack Mysterio and Kidman, followed closely by Raven and Saturn. The latter team tried to help the champions, but like last week, Kidman and Mysterio refused any help. Kidman gets even flowed, Mysterio takes a Death Valley driver, the horsemen then attack Saturn and Raven, with Raven taking his own signature drop toe hold on a steel chair, and I'm probably looking forward to this triple threat tag team match at Slamboree more than any other match on the card. Buff Bagwell vs Ernest Miller then took place in the middle of the ring and as usual, the cat gave his opponent 5 seconds to walk away from the match. Buff Bagwell stayed put, so he took a super kick to the face before firing back with an arm drag and a drop kick. Loads of time wasted during the pre-match promo and even more time was wasted during the match itself. Loads of stalling in and around the ring here before Bagwell starts working over the arm. Buff ends up on the outside where he takes a few kicks from Sonny Ono, but he's able to deliver a swing and neck breaker back inside the ring before Miller goes in control for a while. Ono accidentally kicks Miller, Bagwell performs the blockbuster, Buff Daddy wins on Nitro, and so Buff looks good heading into Slamboree for his US title shot against Big Papa Pump. Ric Flair's just arrived at the building along with his new friends, we've got Double D, Double A, Triple A and a lot of other folks who haven't been given a name yet. Doug Dillinger wants some of whatever the nature boy's smoking but Rick says there's no time, the WCW president's gonna go to the ring and he's gonna make a few announcements. Alright, so the pilot episode of Smackdown aired last week and for those who didn't check out my previous video, here's a quick recap of what went on. From a bull, the rattlesnake, right here tonight on SmackDown against Triple H and The Undertaker. What? Austin, Rock, let me be the first to introduce you to the corporate ministry. Oh my God. Shane McMahon is standing side by side with The Undertaker, the man that abducted Boys, his sister. Are you beginning to understand? It may get a little wacky because X Pac is a close and personal friend of mine. Whoa, whoa, so whoa. Whoa, friends, friends, there's no friends when it comes to these titles, man. Get your head off, would you? Spit Force, wait a minute. Billy Gunn and his friend X-Pac. WWF needs a superhero, and I'm here to bring him one. Woo! The Blue Blazer is back in the WWF because the WWF needs the Blue Blazer back. Needed for what, Owen? Owen? I'm not Owen. Where is Owen? I'm looking for Owen Hart too. Where is he? How many of them are there on two men? Stone Cold Steve Austin here! That's the man! That's the man! That's the man! Oh! That's the man! Has sacrificed himself for Austin! Stutter! Stutter! Oh! Stutter! 
three main points to take away here. First, Shane McMahon and The Undertaker have merged their factions to create the corporate ministry. Vince McMahon's out of the picture and he even sacrificed himself to help Steve Austin. Secondly, Billy Gunn has seemingly left the Generation X. And thirdly, the Blue Blazers back in the WWF. It's been said that Owen didn't want any part of a more risque storyline with Debra and so the geniuses at WWF decided to put him in the Blue Blazer outfit again. Now would be a good time to address Over the Edge and what's going to happen with that show on Reliving the War. The plans to cover the event from start to end, I I've always dreaded Over the Edge and the episode of Raw that follows the event, but I also think it's important to cover both shows, particularly for those who didn't watch wrestling back in 1999. I always said everything would get looked at in this series and that's what I intend to do with this upcoming pay per view. Now, with that in mind, the Raw after Over the Edge won't go head to head with Nitro. I don't think comparing a tribute show to a regular episode of Nitro would be right, you know. So that means I'm going to cover Raw and Nitro in separate videos. Finally, I won't be making any money from both the Over the Edge and Raw Zone videos. Every penny made from those uploads will be donated to the Owen Hart Foundation along with any Wrestling Bios merchandise sales throughout the months of February and March. It's understandable too if you don't want to watch these videos, I totally get it and trust me I'm not looking forward to them either, but at least we can do a little good by raising some money for the foundation. Links will also be posted if you wish to donate directly. Raw kicks off with a corporation promo and a Billy Gunn vs X-Pac match, Ric Flair addresses WCW fans over on Nitro. Shane comes to the ring with his new faction and we've got a nice remix of the Ministry and Corporation theme music that I think works really, really well. On Sunday Night Heat, Shane challenged Vince to a fight tonight on Raw, but Shane wants to address the audience first by calling them all losers. Everyone thinks Shane has no compassion, but none of these people know what it's like to be the boy wonder. He's a success story while everyone in the building tonight lives paycheck to paycheck while drowning their sorrows every Friday night. Shane has it all, the looks, the brains, the money, he's a powerful little man who can control the destiny of others, in Triple H, wearing all leather and a cross around his neck because he's now super spooky, believes that he controls the fate of one people's champion. Hunter's gonna face Rock at Over the Edge on May 23rd, and while Triple H doesn't understand why these people like The Rock with all his little marketing catchphrases and whatnot, Triple H also doesn't care what people think. At Over the Edge, Hunter's gonna end The Rock's career. The Undertaker says he's coming for Steve Austin. He once thought he and Austin could coexist, but clearly that's no longer possible. So we've got ourselves another Undertaker vs Steve Austin match happening on pay per view. Austin defends his title against the Phenom at Over the Edge. Taker says Austin will serve as the ultimate sacrifice on the Raw following Over the Edge. As a matter of fact, Austin's going to be sacrificed to a name even greater than The Undertaker's. Shane announces that he's going to referee that Over the Edge main event featuring Austin and Undertaker. He also announces that Vince needs to answer his challenge to a fight within the next two hours. But then the corporate ministry get interrupted by Mankind, Ken Shamrock, Big Show and Test. Mankind says all four of these men used to work for the corporation in one form or another and now they're a bunch of disgruntled former employees. These guys have formed a union, a union of people you ought to respect son, or up yours for short. And this union wants to get a little revenge for how they were treated by Shane McMahon and the corporation. Mick and company aren't happy with their payoffs and Shane took over the WWF, so Mankind leads the union down to the ring and a big old brawl takes place between the corporate ministry and WWF's latest babyface faction. Shane, Triple H and Undertaker get out of the ring though, these boys want no part of the union. Shane screams that Foley, Show, Test and Shamrock are going to pay for this tonight on Raw, so expect all four union members to compete tonight inside the ring. After a commercial break, Billy Gunn I'm a nice man. took on X-Pac in a one-on-one -on -one match. Looks like Road Dogg and X-Pac are the only guys left in DX as Billy Gunn has officially turned heel. A spinning wheel kick knocks Billy to the mat and X-Pac really thought tonight's the night he would connect with a standing Bronco Buster. Billy makes Kid pay by delivering a jackhammer and this gets followed up with a power slam and a press slam from BA Billy Gunn. 
Looks like Billy's getting a lot of inspiration from WCW tonight as he misses a stinger splash and he then performs a flare flop. This gives X-Pac the chance to fire up with a few kicks before Billy finds himself in position for a bronco buster. A kick to the dick ensures Kid won't be busting any broncos tonight and Billy Gunn beats Waltman with a famouser. Kinda surprised Billy made it look so easy. Road Dog runs down to stop a post-match beatdown from Mr. Ass, the outlaws end up exchanging punches and Rhodey gets the best of his former partner, and Billy then decides to hit James with a steel chair just to prove to everyone that the outlaws are now finished. Kane then makes an appearance but Billy Gunn gets out of the ring, it all ends with the big red machine carrying X-Pac back up the ramp while Road Dog's left on his own to lick his wounds. Times are changing folks, loads of people switching roles recently and loads of new layers being added to already established superstars. On Nitro, Rick comes to the ring with Double A, Double D, Charles Robinson and James J. Bebe Dillon. First, Flair says Charles Robinson's gonna beat Gorgeous George at Slamboree and then fans won't call Robinson Lil Nitch anymore. No, they're gonna call Charles Little Man. Doesn't sound like much of an upgrade, does it? Flair wants Savage and George to come down to the ring, but before that, Flair announces tonight's Nitro main event. It's Flair himself versus Diamond Dallas Page for the world title. Winning the championship tonight would make Flair a 15 time world champion. It would also cause a lot of confusion heading into Slamboree this week. But Rick's once again abusing his power mere days before his match against Roddy Piper where his WCW presidency will be up for grabs. Flair says he's looking forward to meeting Piper in the ring, he says he'll even give Piper's wife a visit and give her a ride on Space Mountain. But before Rick can continue on, Macho Man and Team Madness are seen leaving their dressing room. They head down to the ring following a commercial break, and Flair reminds Savage that he's fired and he can only be reinstated if Gorgeous George beats Charles Robinson this week at Slamboree. Flair then orders security to get in the ring, a big fight breaks out and Slick Rick's able to grab George while Macho, Medusa and Miss Madness get escorted back up the ramp, and this gives little Nate Charles Robinson a chance to talk some smack to his upcoming slamboree opponent. Charles says his strategy is simple, he's gonna buy George a pack of gum because, and I quote, a bimbo can't chew gum and walk at the same time. Uh, George attacks Robinson from behind, Double D Asia then goes after George with a chokehold, security have to come in once again to get George out of harm's way and this whole thing has already gone on for way too long. I feel like I want to walk away from the TV for a while. Flair then tells the pay-per-view providers to change the advertising for this Sunday. When Rick beats DDP tonight, he's gonna face Kevin Nash at Slamboree. And just when you think the promo's over, Flair starts calling out Sting and Goldberg. My god. Sting walks down to the ring, Goldberg then walks down to the ring, Th these two are gonna face each other at Slamboree by the way. And as Rick begins talking more trash, Goldberg knocks the nature boy down with a punch before the stinger attacks Goldberg. The security guys earn their money tonight as they rush back in to break up the fight. A very, very messy promo slot right here on Nitro, Flair was trying to address too many people and the whole thing felt very disjointed. By the way, I want to say hi to my one little fan out there. Hello, Smokey, my cat. On Raw next, it's another corporate ministry promo, my my. On Nitro, we've got more wheeling and dealing from Ric Flair. The corporate ministry walk back down to the ring, and just as Shane was telling everyone to throw away their format sheets for tonight, we see Vince, Stephanie and Linda McMahon entering the arena. Big mommy McMahon's here, so things must be getting serious. Shane's changing every advertised match for Raw tonight in order to get revenge against the union stable. The first match he books is a four-way encounter featuring Bossman, Midian, Viscera and Test. He then books the Acolytes vs Mankind in a two-on-one hardcore match. Shane also announces a Ken Shamrock vs Triple H match where China is going to serve as our special referee. We're going to see Pat Patterson and Jerry Briscoe vs The Mean Street Posse, The Undertaker vs The Big Show, Sable vs Debra in an evening gown match, yeah that one was booked for Shane's own amusement apparently, and Triple H then gives Shane an idea. Tonight, in the Raw main event, we've got Stone Cold Steve Austin vs The Rock, my god. 
Triple H suggests making this main event a lumberjack match with the corporate ministry serving as the lumberjacks. Vince McMahon shows up followed by Linda and Stephanie. Mr McMahon tells his son to think about all this and consider stepping away because he's making a lot of mistakes tonight, but Shane won't listen. Vince thinks Linda can maybe talk some sense into the boy wonder, but Shane tells his mom to shut up, and this makes Vince go at Shane, but the corporate ministry are right there to back the boy wonder up. Vince decides to leave, but not before Shane reveals that it was he who set up the kidnapping of Stephanie. It was Shane who got the teddy bear, it was Shane who picked out her wedding dress. Shane orchestrated the whole thing behind Vince's back. Vince dashes back into the ring, but he gets taken out quite easily by the corporate ministry. And when Shane heads back up the rampway, he wants his dad to confirm that their match later tonight is on. When Shane says, I'll take that as a yes, Vince says, you're damn right. So tonight we've got Vince McMahon vs Shane McMahon on Raw's War. On Nitro, Ric Flair wants to plan ahead for Slamboree. He's confident that he's going to face Kevin Nash this week at the pay-per-view. So he's got a check for $50,000 he wants to give to Stevie Ray. If the NWO can take Big Sexy out tonight, then the money goes straight into the black and white bank account. And Stevie's quite eager to get his hands on Flair's money. Later on, Stevie tells the NWO about Flair's generous offer to take out that, and I quote, fruity booty known as Kevin Nash, so the boys leave the locker room to come up with some sort of plan. Triple A heard all of this while taking a shit in the NWO locker room, and he ends up telling Kevin Nash everything he heard. He also tells Kevin Nash that he was taking a number two for some reason. So Big Kev knows there's a bounty on his head now, thanks to Triple A. We'll see how this plays out later on. It felt great. Yeah. It felt so good when I did it with my penis. Yeah. A girl let me do it. It literally just happened. Yeah. Having sex can make a nice man out the meanest. Yeah. Oh, hey. We've got the Main Street Posse vs Patterson and Briscoe next on Raw. On Nitro, it's Hardcore Hack vs Bam Bam Bigelow. Rodney says the Posse are going to send Patterson and Briscoe to the old folks home after this match right here, and Vince tells the Stooges to go out there and kick some Main Street ass. Vince also sends Stephanie and Linda back to their hotel room by the way. He doesn't want them to witness the destruction of young Shano tonight on Raw. Patterson and Briscoe walk down to the ring and yeah, it doesn't look like any of these guys are in proper wrestling attire tonight, but that doesn't stop the Stooges going for the kill and the crowd pops when Briscoe performs a nice waistlock takedown. The crowd continue to cheer as Patterson hits a low blow before whipping Pete Gas with his belt. Things then get scrappy when PG takes a ring step bump and Rodney gets dumped out of the ring. And the rather humorous bumps continue when Patterson throws Rodney over the barricade on the outside. The posse can't make it back to the ring and so Earl Hebner awards the victory to Patterson and Briscoe. Not much of a match here, but the entertainment value was off the charts. The audience loved it, so mission accomplished. Backstage, Shane wants the corporate ministry to pay Vince McMahon a visit. We see the faction walking around following a commercial break, so Mr McMahon's in a lot of trouble. Bam Bam Bigelow faces Brian Nobbs at Slamboree, but tonight he's got Hack in a hardcore match. The Surge container makes a return, and as the match gets underway, the ring's already filled up with way too much crap. There's no room to wrestle here, so the boys are going to go through their usual routine of hitting each other with anything they can find. Bobby Heenan says it best here, you can't call these kind of matches, all you can do is watch them. I really struggle with hardcore matches in this series because there's really nothing to them at all, but here's a few high spots. Hack goes through two tables before getting the surge container placed over his head, Bam Bam kicks his opponent before taking a pretty bad looking bulldog, and Hack then went to work using his trusty kendo stick. After a commercial break, Bam Bam put Hack through two tables with a superplex, Brian Nobbs then walked down to the ring shouting nasty at the fans sitting at the rampway, Nobbs then wrecks Bam Bam by using a trash can, Hack takes a few shots too with a broken kendo stick, and we have no winner here as Brian Nobbs buries Bam Bam underneath some broken wood. Nobbs looks at the camera and he says, a nasty sensation's coming upon your stinking head. What a complete tit. The fatal four-way match featuring the corporate ministry and test is up next on Raw. On Nitro, it's Conan vs Horace Hogan. 
It's all Conan at the beginning of our Nitro match, but when it goes to the outside, Horse takes control and K-Dog takes a beating. When the two get in the ring, the crowd gets distracted by something going on in the audience, and I always think this must be a pretty crappy feeling for the competitors working their ass off to put on a wrestling match. Horace completely controls this matchup, and Conan hardly gets in any offense at all. And while Horace Hogan is a very competent wrestler, his ring style and his choice of moves could be described as pretty fucking boring. So it's not really that surprising that fans didn't pay attention to what was going on. The match drags on quite a bit until Conan gets a boot up when Double H was coming off the top rope. We then see the rolling lariat from K-Dog, followed by the K-Factor facebuster, but just like last week, the NW hit the ring when Conan applies the Tequila Sunrise. Vincent, Stevie Ray, Brian Adams and Scott Norton give K-Dog a kickin' and here comes Big Sexy Kevin Nash for the save. Conan said he wanted nothing to do with Big Kev anymore, but also remember Kevin said he didn't put out that hit on K-Dog last week either. So Nash seems pretty cool with Conan and K-Dog seems thankful for the help. The old wolf pack buddy shows some mutual respect before Kev heads back up the ramp. Looks like the NWO won't be getting that 50 grand after all. On Raw, the odds were firmly stacked against Test as he entered this Four Corners match. As expected, the corporate ministry focused all their attacks on the big man. If Test was smart, he would have tagged out the moment the bell rung, but no, he had to be a hero and he had to take shots from all three members of the corporate ministry. Test actually ended up winning the match though when Bossman accidentally hit Midian with his nightstick. Bossman takes a big boot, Viscera takes a forearm shot, and Test pins Midian to claim a victory for the Union. When the inevitable post-match beatdown begins, the Union storm the ring to help their boy out. The corporate ministry get out of harm's way, and there you have it. A pretty big win for Test this week on Raw's War. Triple H, China, Undertaker and Paul Bear have located Vince McMahon's office and we see Vince getting thrown into a wall just before his big match on Raw. That match is up next by the way, it's Vince and Shane in the war zone while over on Nitro we've got loads of backstage shenanigans to cover, wonderful. First of all, some of Flair's friends from the Mental Institute have invaded the production truck. It was cool when the Outsiders did this in 1996, in 1999 not so much. The guys in the production truck laugh at this poor guy, they call him a goof and they tell him to get out. Nothing quite like making fun of the mentally unwell, is there? We then cut over to Ric Flair who thanks his son for helping him two weeks ago. Rick says he needed time away and he needed time in the Central Florida Mental Institute, so Rick's grateful that his son showed him some tough love. To thank David, Rick wants to put his son in a match tonight on Nitro. Charles Robinson's going to referee so it's going to be a piece of cake. David's really excited to wrestle again and he goes off to get his gear ready. And when David disappears, Rick reveals that his son's opponent <laughs> is Ming. <laughs> oh my god. Arn Anderson's really against this idea but Rick loves it. He tells Robinson to go stir the pot a little and tell Ming David's been talking crap about him. And if there's one match that can save Nitro this week on TNT, it's definitely David Flair vs Ming. I can't wait. Roddy Piper's arrived at the building, he's annoyed that Flair talked about his wife earlier on during Rick's promo, and Piper invades Flair's locker room where it looked like Rick was having a party with his newly acquired friends from Florida. Rick has no chance here, Piper takes out a security guard before putting a reality check shirt over Flair's head. Roddy then dumps a drink tray all over the nature boy that was filled with icy cold water, and everyone in Flair's locker room seems very distressed as Piper leaves. Flair then bumps into Scotty Steiner and he asks Big Papa Pump to take out Kevin Nash, not Roddy Piper. Flair wants to get Piper himself, but he needs someone to take out Big Sexy before Slamboree this week. Steiner says don't worry, Big Papa Pump's got this, but Steiner ends up running into Buff Bagwell and Buff Daddy becomes Scott's target. Buff gets destroyed, Scott says he'll see Bagwell at Slamboree, so it looks like Kevin Nash is in the clear. Finally, we cut to a press conference with Lex Luger and Miss Elizabeth. We have no idea what was going to be said here because the camera feed cuts off before Lex gets a chance to speak. Maybe something comes of this, maybe it doesn't. It's hard to tell these days when it comes to WCW. Over on Raw, Shane knows Vince just took a beating backstage and he's out here saying he knew his dad didn't have the guts to show up for a fight. Shane holds all the power in WWF, he's the leader of the corporate ministry, and old Vince McMahon's nothing but yesterday's news. 
Since Vince can't make it down to the ring, Shane wants Art Hebner to raise his hand in victory. But wait, here comes Vince now, falling on his face due to his life-threatening injuries. Shane dashes out to hit a clothesline on his old man, a very weak clothesline may I add, and the bell rings to start the match when Shane throws Vince inside the ropes. Young Shane chokes his dad out before hitting him with a bronco buster, imagine hitting your dad with a bronco buster on live TV. Shane then hits another weak clothesline and Vince isn't happy about it either. So Mr McMahon shows his son how it's supposed to be done and my god he almost took his head off right there didn't he? I wonder if Shane was told to purposely make his clotheslines look weak because this right here got a ridiculous pop from the audience. Vince then hits his boy with a stone cold stunner, he talks a little trash before covering his own flesh and blood. Vince beats Shane 1, 2, 3 in the middle of the ring and remember all this guys when we get to the very end of reliving the war, it all comes full circle in a way. A terrible match right here but an absolutely electric crowd response makes it worth watching. On Raw, Mankind takes on the Acolytes in a hardcore match. On Nitro, it's David Flair vs Ming. This right here is the WCW content I live for. David Flair is fast becoming my favourite wrestler and I am so so eager to see what happens in this grudge match. The two lock- <laughs> Oh my god. David uses his head as a landing cushion when shoved to the mat, this is gonna be good. He kicks Ming, he gets in a few chops, but Ming's in a no selling mood tonight and things can only get better from this point on. M M Ming performs a chop, David hits the mat, Young Flair gets picked up again. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> the way he falls. <laughs> Uh, David gets brought to the corner for, <laughs> for a few stiff chops and fair play, he takes him like a chomp. Flair gets up, he just stands there looking at his opponent while Ming breathes heavily <laughs> from, <laughs> from all the excitement. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> David, <laughs> David gets slapped around a bit before he tries <laughs> once again to chop Ming. <laughs> and look, <laughs> he... <laughs> oh. <laughs> he, he doesn't know what to do he, he legit doesn't know what to do he, he walks around the ring looking super confused and Ming has to just kind of wait until David tries a lock up now to David's credit he's improved a lot since the Bischoff match he lays in more kicks and chops and these look okay nothing great but they're okay but Ming isn't going to bump for David at all here, and David bumps. <laughs> David bumps like a plank of wood when taking an inverted atomic drop. Ming sinks his claws into David's back for a good old-fashioned back rake, and David, <laughs> David, <laughs> David just falls to the mat. He just falls. <laughs> he, he just falls to the mat when shoved by Ming, and his corner bump here looks like a Nick Patrick special. <laughs> oh, um, more kicks from David, more chops from David. There's another chop from Ming right there, and look at the crowd reaction to this chop right here. They can't believe how much David's getting wailed on. And look, is that a smile from Ming? <laughs> I've never seen this man smile in my whole life. Ming suplexes young David, and there it is, tongue and death grip. David loses the match via pinfall, and yeah, Nitro might very well win this week's episode of Reliving the War. Consider me incredibly entertained. President Flair comes out to do a bit of nature as he thrusts his little pecker at Tori Wilson. He, I'm sorry, he mocks David as young Flair gets sent away on a stretcher, and this has to be match of the week, it just has to be. The corporate ministry haven't been having a great night in terms of wins and losses but the acolytes look to fix that problem in this 2 on 1 hardcore match. They use the ring steps to their advantage in the early going and Farouk used Mankind's 2x4 on the outside and while a double clothesline gives Foley an opening he was unable to take full advantage. He gets another chance after kicking Farouk and his little dominator and he follows this up with trash can shots to both acolytes and it looked like Foley was going to win the match when Bradshaw accidentally hit his partner with a chair shot. Bradshaw takes the double arm DDT and Foley goes for Mr. Socko. Farouk takes Mankind's finisher but Bradshaw is up again to hit Mick Foley with a clothesline from hell and that's all she wrote. Mankind takes a powerbomb through two steel chairs and the Acolytes win this hardcore 2 on 1 handicap match. Next on Raw, it's Ken Shamrock vs Triple H. On Nitro, World Champion Diamond Dallas Page cuts a promo. 
Page wonders if there's ever been a guy in wrestling who started off as a manager, went on to become a commentator and then reached the peak of the business by becoming world heavyweight champion. Mean Gene says he can't think of anyone who's accomplished this except for DDP. Page also says no one's defended the belt as much as he has in these past few weeks, but remember Dallas my friend, you also lost that belt last week for a couple of hours. Page says he's already reached legendary status, he's like Gretzky in hockey and Jordan in basketball, DDP's in his prime and he understands why Flair wants to be just like Dallas Page. Again, DDP says he sees a little of himself in his opponent. This has been Dallas's troll comment as of late and even Mean Jean's now picking up on it. But again, DDP says he's in his prime while Flair's past it. Those slamboree posters don't need to be changed and the pay-per-view providers don't need a call because if Ric Flair wants to be the man, then Ric Flair has to beat the man. On Raw, China checks over Ken Shamrock and she says Kenny's packing a wee wanky in his tight blue trunks. How embarrassing. Ken takes it out on Triple H by going for the arm and Hunter's already in deep trouble, but all it takes are a few punches to the face and Shamrock backs off a little. Ken's able to keep to his game plan by once again going after the arm. Cornette talked last week about Triple H changing his style up a little by zoning in on body parts, but so far Ken's doing a much better job of it, though he gets stopped in his tracks again when Triple H counters a Hurricane Rana attempt with a powerbomb. Hunter chokes Shamrock in the corner while China completely ignores what's going on and when Ken applies a knee bar submission, China breaks it up by raking Kenny Boy in the face. She then covers her eyes when Hunter performs a low blow and when Ken's able to cover Hunter after a jumping leg lariat, China refuses to count. This is pretty pointless. Shamrock counters a pedigree with an ankle lock attempt, China helps Hunter to the ropes, China then almost gets suplexed by the world's most dangerous man when she tries to break up the ankle lock but the numbers are just too much here. It ends with Kenny Boy taking a low blow and Triple H wins after nailing the pedigree. You know, as fascinating as all this corporate ministry stuff is, it's not really lending itself to a good episode of Raw is it? This whole show is based on the corporate ministry versus the union, which does sound good on paper, but I don't know, it, it hasn't been great so far, has it? The Undertaker takes on the big show next on Raw. On Nitro, it's Kurt Hennig vs Booker T for the TV title. Seeing as Rick Steiner vs Booker T is already in place for Slamboree, I can't see Hennig winning this one. The two lock up and Hennig gets the better of Booker with an arm drag. The two go at it again and, oh, <laughs> I like it, I like it. Look, even Booker T got a kick out of that one. Booker's able to outsmart Hennig and Kurt takes a timeout. The TV champ's still got that big smile on his face and it looks like he's having a real good time tonight, you love to see it. Kurt's able to do a little damage at the ring post and that smile quickly gets wiped off Booker T's face. Kurt gets back inside the ropes to do a bit more damage and just when the match was getting good, no, just as the match was actually beginning, here comes Stevie Ray again with his slapjack. Stevie interrupted the Hennig vs Booker match on Thunder and here he is doing the same thing again. The referee calls for the bell just as Rick Steiner runs down to attack Booker. The finish to this one annoyed me on a personal level because I was actually really looking forward to this match, but it's also my fault for expecting more out of WCW. Now, I said the Big Show vs The Undertaker could be something special judging by that stare down they had previously on Raw. Let's see if that's the case as these two giants collide in the middle of the ring. The Undertaker's the aggressor here at the opening bell, but the crowd pops when Show comes out of the corner to lift Taker up with a chokehold. It's usually The Undertaker doing this spot, but not today, pal. The dead man stays vigilant though and Cho takes a few shots in the corner, but Cho's able to grab Undertaker for a bear hug and it's pretty cool seeing someone manhandle the Undertaker for a change. The Phenom takes a big boot before getting clotheslined out of the ring and oh no, Paul's pouring some ether on a cloth, it's the old Jan Gonzalez trick. The Undertaker takes the bottle and he pours the contents out onto his elbow pad. He gets in the ring and he applies a sleeper. The Big Show's able to perform a snapmare, but he's looking pretty dazed. So The Undertaker grabs a baseball bat and he breaks it over his opponent's head. The referee calls for the bell and we have got ourselves another DQ finish this week on Reliving the War. Big Show's been busted open as Undertaker continues his attack after the bell, and the Phenom looks pretty vicious here just three weeks before his WWF title opportunity at Over the Edge. Shit match though, those little moments where the Big Show manhandled Taker were impressive, but this really wasn't competitive at all. It feels like this episode of Raw should be great, but it's just not doing it for me. Raw ends this week with the Deborah vs Sable evening gown match plus the Rock vs Steve Austin in a lumberjack match. On Nitro, it's Ric Flair vs DDP for the world title. 
The cops are told before the Nitro main event that the patients from the mental ward don't have a release and they must be brought back to the hospital ASAP. The two competitors make their way down to the ring with Flair getting a much better ovation than DDP, although remember Nitro is in Charlotte tonight. The first big move of the match is a backdrop from Dallas but Flair comes back with those signature chops that his son David really needs to work on. DDP then takes a hip toss that forces him out of the ring and we then get an extended brawl on the outside that takes up nearly half of the match run time. Neither man really gets an advantage here and both guys give as good as they get. Both competitors perform low blows before making it back to the ring but it's DDP who takes control with a swinging neckbreaker back inside the ropes. Flair replies with a snapmare followed by a signature knee drop. This isn't enough to keep DDP down as the world champ gets up for another back body drop. Flair then goes up and over the top turnbuckle and Paige brings the challenger back into the ring with a suplex from the apron. We then see the usual Flair launch from the top rope and DDP then applies a figure four. The crowd's pretty dead for this one by the way and this doesn't improve at all when Flair makes it to the ropes and Dallas applies another figure four. Flair breaks free, he delivers a few more chops, DDP fights back with a discus clothesline but Rick gets fired up after going up and over the turnbuckle again. He delivers a double axe handle that finally gets the crowd into the match but here comes Randy Savage and gorgeous George. Rick applies the figure four but George gets in the ring to pull Rick's hair. Macho then passes DDP those brass nooks that don't look like brass nooks but we'll call them brass nooks anyway. Flair gets whacked, Charles Robinson chases George and Scott Dickinson runs down to count the 1, 2, 3. So this means Nash vs DDP is still on for Slamboree and we've still got Flair vs Piper. Everything that happened on this night as it pertains to the world title could have been completely skipped over and ignored because nothing changed and nothing's been added, a complete and utter waste of time. Over on Raw, Sable decides she's not going to compete in this evening gown match. She's at the Playboy Mansion getting ready for her second shoot so she's sending in her stunt double to take her place on Raw. It's big Nicole Bass. Nicole comes out, the crowd aren't too amused and Deborah just decides she's going to take her evening gown off and lose the match because why not eh? Nicole wants to dish out some pain though so Jeff Jarrett runs out to hit Miss Bass with his guitar. This gets a big pop from the audience by the way. But then Val Venus comes out to attack Double J. The commentators think Venus is here to help Nicole but Val only has eyes for Deborah and it looks like Deborah's interested too. So Venus carries Deborah back up the ramp before Double J can get his hands on him. During a commercial break Venus and Jared fought backstage, Deborah was nowhere to be found and neither was Owen Hart for that matter. Next up it's The Rock vs Steve Austin but don't get your hopes up because the match doesn't happen. The fans give both competitors a great reception on their way to the ring and the audience is definitely amped up to see another Rock and Austin match but then the lumberjacks come down to the ring and maybe rather fittingly all hell breaks loose. Austin and Rock join forces to take out the corporate ministry as Shane McMahon makes his way down to the ring. This was all a trap just to get Rock and Austin all alone and it doesn't take long for the lumberjacks to get the upper hand. Vince McMahon then makes an appearance and he sends the whole roster down to the ring including the union and look even Vince McMahon gets in on the action as a huge WWF brawl takes place in and around the ring. The Rock ends up getting isolated by Triple H, China and The Undertaker. Rocky gets destroyed as the men make their way back up the rampway but when the fight gets to the entrance stage Stone Cold reappears and he tries to help Rock out. Unfortunately the team of Triple H and The Undertaker turn out to be too much for Rock and Austin. We think the WWF champ and the number one contender are leaving the fight when they begin descending into the Raw stage and we think The Rock's done for as he tries to fight off Triple H in China. Austin does return to help Rock once again but he's a little too late and the great one gets thrown off the entrance stage. With Rock out of the picture Undertaker and Triple H join forces to attack Stone Cold and Raw goes off the air with the Undertaker throwing the champion off the stage as the crowd looks on in disbelief. The corporate ministry annihilated Rock and Austin here. While the faction didn't win all their matches on Raw they sure look like winners as the show fades to black. It doesn't happen very often but I didn't enjoy either show this week. I know, stop being a downer but I have to be honest too. The corporate ministry got overexposed. Instead of drip feeding viewers little moments here and there of what should have been this new dominating faction, the corporate ministry were instead featured in almost every match and every promo which did not help in building any kind of tension or any sort of real threat. I know the story mainly unfolded on Smackdown but a new TV show shouldn't hurt an already established TV show. 
WCW Nitro? <sighs> I don't even know anymore. I joked about David Flair's match, but honestly, it was the only thing that entertained me this week over on TNT, and it was for all the wrong reasons. Nitro usually has one standout match, but it felt lifeless this week, and as mentioned earlier, there were no storyline developments that actually made any kind of difference to the upcoming pay-per-view. I'm given the point of Raw, though, two shows I really didn't enjoy, but if I was forced to pick one over the other, I'd say check out Raw, just because the corporate ministry angles at least something different. The way it was all presented on this night, though, just wasn't for me. It kind of reminded me of the old days of the NWO. Raw's now on 94 points, Nitro stays on 71, and we've got 19 ties on the board. In the TV ratings, Raw dominated with a 6.4, while Nitro scored a 3.4. Next up, we've got Slamboree 99 and things are now going to get interesting. Everyone says WCW didn't have another decent pay-per-view following Spring Stampede 99, and we have already busted a whole lot of myths surrounding the Monday Night War through this series. So let's see for ourselves if WCW really did mess up every single pay-per-view from now right up until their demise in 2001. There's also no Nitro next week as the show makes way for the NBA playoffs, so the next episode of Reliving the War will only feature Raw. There's going to be a few more on the post shows after Over the Edge, but I'll remind you guys about that as we come closer to the dreaded pay per view. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoy Reliving the War or any of the videos I make on this channel, please subscribe as it really helps me out a lot, and I'll hopefully see you all this week for Slamboree. Take care, everyone.